once upon a time, in the heart of the mysterious land of Transylvania, where ancient forests whispered secrets and jagged mountains stood guard, there existed a castle cloaked in shadows. It was the abode of Count Dracula, a creature of the night, a blood-sucking monster feared by all who heard tales of his nocturnal exploits. As dusk settled over the rugged landscape, the castle seemed to awaken from its slumber. Bats, dark messengers of the night, spiraled around its spires, casting elongated shadows on the rocky ground. Count Dracula, a figure of elegant menace, emerged from the depths of his fortress. The nearby village, nestled in the valley below, trembled at the mere mention of his name. Whispers of his presence echoed through cobblestone streets, sending shivers down the spines of the villagers. Their homes bore crucifixes, and the pungent scent of garlic hung in the air, feeble attempts to ward off the supernatural terror that lurked in the dark. Count Dracula, a handsome gentleman with a veneer of charm that masked his monstrous nature, prowled the night. His eyes, like pools of darkness, held a mesmerizing allure that ensnared the hearts of unsuspecting victims, particularly the fair maidens of the village. One such maiden, Elena, with raven hair and porcelain skin, caught the attention of the nocturnal lord. Elena, born to humble villagers in Transylvania, possessed an ethereal beauty that captivated the hearts of all who beheld her. Her life was unremarkable, spent amidst the rustic charm of the village, orphaned at a young age because of her parents' early death. Elena grew up under the watchful eye of the village, her raven hair cascading like a waterfall, and her eyes reflecting the innocence of a sheltered life. She was known for her kindness and grace, an embodiment of the purity that resided within the heart of Transylvania. However, fate had other plans for Elena. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, she encountered Count Dracula on the outskirts of the village. Disguised as a weary traveler, he charmed his way into her life, exploiting the loneliness that lingered within her soul. My dear Elena, do not fear. I am but a traveler in need of shelter. Elena, captivated by his charisma, invited him into her humble abode. Little did she know that she had welcomed a creature whose thirst for blood surpassed the boundaries of mortal understanding. As the night unfolded, Dracula's true nature emerged. His fangs sank into Elena's delicate neck, and her life force flowed into him, leaving her in a state of ethereal ecstasy and drained vitality. The village awoke to a chilling reality. The once vibrant Elena, now a pale specter, roamed the streets with hollow eyes. The villagers, grief-stricken and terrorized, realized that the monster they feared was not a mere legend, but a living nightmare. Vampire hunters, their resolve steeled by the wails of the grieving, gathered beneath the waning moon. Their leader, a grizzled man named Van Helsing, a seasoned vampire hunter, had earned a reputation as the scourge of the supernatural. His past was shrouded in mystery, his demeanor stoic, and his eyes haunted by the many battles fought against creatures that lurked in the shadows. It was a personal vendetta that fueled his relentless pursuit of the undead. Armed with an array of ancient weaponry passed down through generations of vampire hunters, Van Helsing approached his task with a grim determination. His arsenal included a crossbow with bolts tipped in silver, a blade forged from enchanted steel, and vials of sacred water gathered from blessed springs. Van Helsing, having heard the cries of the village 
and the lamentations of those who had lost loved ones to Dracula's nocturnal predations, swore an oath to eradicate the vampiric scourge. His knowledge of dark arts and forbidden lore, acquired through years of study, made him a formidable adversary. We must rid this land of the vampiric scourge. Tonight, we confront Count Dracula in his own domain. The clash between mortal and immortal unfolded beneath the ancient arches of Castle Dracula. Fangs gleamed in the moonlight, and the clash of steel against the supernatural echoed through the night. As dawn approached, the hunters emerged victorious, the castle silent once more. But the cryptic lord of the night eluded their grasp, retreating to the shadows. We've won this battle, but the war against darkness is far from over. The village, scarred by the horrors that unfolded, began to rebuild. Yet, whispers of Count Dracula's lingering presence persisted a shadow that refused to be dispelled. In the eerie calm that followed, the ancient trees of Transylvania held their breath, and the jagged mountains stood as silent witnesses to a tale that echoed through time. Count Dracula, the blood-sucking phantom, had retreated to the depths of his castle, biding his time until the next moonlit night when the shadows would once again dance in the heart of Transylvania. <laughs>